so my name is Jeff. I'm with IDX Broker. I've been here coming up on seven years here very soon. And I've got Gretchen who's joining in with me, who's in the background going to be answering questions. There's a lot of different opinions. There's a lot of different ways things can happen with these. Everything I say is going to be based off of what I've had conversations with, with my clients, my past clients, future clients, current dev partners, past dev partners. And then I'm going to show you some examples of exactly how this is going to be done. So there's many different ways that this can be done, whether it's on a self-hosted page, whether it's on a saved link within IDX Broker. But we're going to kind of show you the tools of how it works with IDX Broker. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples of clients that we use regularly showing how this is done and then I'm going to introduce to you another way that that you can join the community a little bit more of IDX broker it is through Facebook what's kind of crazy is we've had this webinar up and planned for since last quarter beginning of last quarter and just recently we've had a topic conversation within a Facebook group that has been very powerful very good feedback and so I, well, I'll introduce you to that get you going on how to join that get involved is what I kind of suggest so to get started, first things first, with IDX Broker, people always want to think that with IDX Broker, you know, and we pull in the MLS listings, there's 75,000 listings in MLS. Why don't I get 75,000 index pages right off the bat? Well, a lot of things have to go into that. One, real estate doesn't stay on the market long enough for it to get indexed. Zillow, Trulia, Redfin, all the major companies, they absolutely 100% dominate the market. You're never going to beat them on an address. This is why I stress, every sales rep stresses, every support member stresses, hyper local landing pages, and we're going to go over how and why. You can create community pages based off of a city, county, postal zip code. It could be off of a subdivision, an area. You can use as many advanced search filters as you want. You can narrow it down by pools, in-ground pools, hot tubs, ocean views, basically any filter that's out there, you have that ability to narrow it down. And instead of having a very long query string in the URL that is a bunch of gibberish to 99.9% .9 of us, creating hyperlocal predefined searches allows you to control the long tail URL which is going to be very SEO friendly. So keep in mind when you create safe links, when you create pages, think about your consumer, think about your target client, your target audience. How are they going to perform a search within the area that you want to represent the, as the you know, best selling agent in this area? First and foremost, getting going with IDX Broker, you need to set up your account with a custom domain. So by default, so we do not have access into your registrar. So wherever you're hosting at, whether it's GoDaddy, Bluehost, HostGator, whatever it might be, every account is going to be set up as domain.idxbroker.com. So if we take a look up in here, my default domain is jefftrue.com. The default subdomain where the IDX Broker content lives is jefftrue.idxbroker.com because IDX Broker is not going into my registrar. So as a consumer of IDX Broker, I'm going to go into my hosting, or if you have a developer partner, you're going to have them go do this for you. They're going to go Go into your registrar, wherever your hosting is going to be at, and they're going to create a CNAME record and they're going to basically redirect it back to subdomains.idxbroker.com. You're going to give either have a call with your developer partner, your developer, your designer, your office assistant, or your team in general and figure out what is going to be the best for your team. Mine that I have chosen is search. So everything that's going to be displayed on IDX Broker subdomain page for my website is going to be search.jefftrue.com and whatever the trailing URL is. This is going to ensure basically when Google crawls every page on your website that it's going to look at the coding in the background and in layman's terms, it's going to see that everything that's on search dot actually is going to redirect back to the root domain. So that's letting Google know that Jeff True is the owner of the content that's whatever's being displayed on search. So it's going to give you the SEO credit. So first things first, let's set up that custom subdomain. If you don't know how to do that, reach out to a dev partner, reach out to our support team. Let's get you switched over to that. We want you getting all the SEO credit that you can. When you guys succeed, we succeed. Second thing you want to do is since we're talking about results pages, landing pages, how and why, let's go make sure that we have a good representation of what we want it to look like. So we're going to do that by going to designs, website, page templates. Underneath the results section right here, which most of you should know if you've already got an IDX account, you can change these up. 
or your developer partner can do that. You'll hover over homes over here and under this edit column, you've got your page preferences, but then on the next one, you've got your page layout. So we're gonna click on page layout. Now we have different templates that are available. So the newest ones is mobile first is one that's available on light and platinum. Platinum offers one that's called home Atlas. Home Atlas is one that's gonna be more of a, like a Google results page. When you look for a hotel, it's gonna have a map on one side, rows and columns on the other side. Same thing with Zillow, Trulia, Redfin, what everybody wants is a map and a results page. If you have a developer partner, they can also come in and now create what's called a custom partner template. So if you wanted to, if you have an idea of something you want to have displayed in a unique way, then um, you can actually contact some of our developer partners. They are creating actually custom templates. Also, some of these developer partners have their own custom templates that they've already created by using JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Once you have your results page all figured out, then we're going to be moving on to the next section. So what we need to do is we're going to start off. The first thing is we're going to create a saved link. Now, a safe link in our system is the predefined search. We're going to go to designs, websites, and down here at the bottom, it's saved links. Now I have a whole bunch of these popped up just because majority of the demos, or if anybody wants us to prove that we can do it, we can do, I'm going to do it on here. So I've got 167 of them, but we're going to create a new one because we can do whatever we want. When we click on create new, now we're going to go pick a search page. You have several different options that you can do with these. Most commonly done with these types of advanced search pages are going to be using advanced search. This is going to give us the most options. So that way, if you want to narrow things down by something with a pool, something with a hot tub, something with a view around a school district, area, community, subdivision, those are all advanced search filters for your specific MLS. We click next step. We move into the search criteria. So on the top is going to be your core fields. This is going to be your city, county, postal zip code. This can also be your property subtype. So if you wanted to pop something in here, that's going to be, you know, single family residential, but then you also want to create something that's going to be condos or, you know, several different available things. So attached, detached, whatever it's going to be. You can also create them off of different property types. So if it's going to be something in commercial, you can do commercial for churches, uh, heavy industrial, you can create pretty fine searches based off of what your company does, what you specialize in and what your targeted client is. I'm going back to residential and I live in Eugene, so I can select my city. Many different things you can do is create 20 of these for the exact same search. However, you can break it down by price point. I see many different ways of this happening. Oftentimes I'll see clients that will create one and they will put in no price range. And then they're going to go back in and create a second one, a third one, a fourth one, a fifth one, and narrow them down by price ranges. So they're going to go from between 200 and 300, 300 to 400, 400 to 500, 500, and just keep on going. You have that ability to create unlimited number of these pages. Honestly, the more pages that you have, the better indexing you got to be, because it's all going to depend on how your clients are going to be going into Google, Yahoo, Bing, and perform these searches. So by default, your prices are going to show up. So I'm going to knock it out of there. And then I'm going to come down. I can do, I'll do one off of uh, an area. So I'm going to go uh, like Lane, County, and then uh, my, my city that I live in is divided up uh, in little, they're not really subdivisions, but they're just kind of, I mean, areas, best way to describe it. So we, if we do, um, let's go North Gillum area. With here, you can choose this. You can actually choose multiple ones of these. So if North Gillum has a couple of different sections, like there's a North Gillum, say a, an East Gillum, South Gillum, you can go combine all of these into one and have them all displayed at one time. You can narrow them down and create one for North Gillum, one for South Gillum, one for East Gillum, completely up to you guys. Any advanced search field, like I mentioned before, you can use, so if it's bank owned, short sale, waterfront, parking garages, spaces, anything it can be by houses built. So if you wanna do like a new subdivision, you can put one in there that it's you know built in 2019. So you want a house that's probably new or maybe it's been built and it's been sitting on the market for a long time, kind of hard to do right now with everything so hot. Anyway, you can create as much of these as you want. Maximum results per page, you can set that. So if we do like 25, we want to sort them by the newest listings. You have the option to do newest listings, oldest listings, least expensive to most, most expensive to least. 
And then you got Bed Baths and Square Foot, kind of an awkward one in my opinion. Newest listings I think is probably the best one for this. That way if you've got a client that's constantly coming back to your website and they're clicking on that page, let's say you've got that overpriced mansion sitting on there that's sitting at the top of the page for four months, three months, that client's gonna be like, oh man, that house is still there. Let's do the newest listings. Let's get something fresh on top. Let's get them looking at something else. As you know, every buyer comes in with a price range. If their price range is, you know, $355,000, but you know what? There's that house for $375,000, just barely above it. Look at how much more I get out of it. Give them that option. Keep showing them what's coming in new. Every time you create a predefined search in the back end, I would highly suggest doing view results in a new window. Doing this in a new window is just going to verify that this save link that you create is going to populate results. That is a big thing because you don't want to go through and make a whole bunch of these and go, oh man, I screwed up. I made all these links and I didn't test it. And now something's wrong. I got to go redo every single one of them. This is what a standard URL string would look like if we didn't do save links. That right there, everybody can look at that and go, there is no SEO value probably out of that. It's going to not rank me very well. So we'll close that down and we're going to change this. So we're going to come in here and go next step. We're going to go North Gillum Homes for Sale. And I'm going to put this one in here as my webinar. This is going to automatically populate the URL for you. So this page title is what's going to display up in the tab. You can come in here and it's going to auto generate with this with a dash in between each one of them based off of conversations i've had people do better when they try to keep it you know from three five maybe six words maximum and try to narrow down how that client might do that specific type of a search inside each of these pages you can do meta tag descriptions meta tag keywords and then custom subheaders custom subheaders is going to be the content that's going to be displaying below the header above the map and results page so you can go in and put you can add images into this you can go into the html section of these and let's say you have a youtube video if you come up and you find a public youtube video about this area you want to drop it in there youtube gets results go in there let's get that out of there embed that video, put in your content, and then you're gonna have content above the results that's explaining some of the area. Another option inside of here is creating, like we talked about, creating one general results page, but then creating many of them within price ranges. So you can create this one here and then go 100 to 200, and then you can go 200 to 300. Obviously you'll give a little bit more detail than this. And then after you create those predefined searches inside of our system, after you create this one, then you can come back in here and grab the new URL that we're gonna make, and then you'll take and hyperlink it over to that one. So they can click on the 100, 200, and it'll go to a results page within just that 100, 200 price range, or the 200 to 300, or the 300 to 400. Give your clients that option. Keeping things simple for your clients, one click, two clicks, is gonna kinda help with the bounce rate, it's going to keep them on the website. It's going to keep them finding exactly what they want to find. So I'm going to do save and manage link, and then we're going to go find it and go view it. So here's my page name, North Gillum Homes for Sale. And to view this and get the link, there's two different ways. So we can preview the link, and it's going to do this. If you're using WordPress, you'll have our API that's going to be pulling it over into the WordPress dashboard, so you can drag and drop and place them inside your navigation menu. You can hyperlink them off of, uh, you know, using short code off of a text, uh, an image, off of a page, a blog post, whatever you want to use with this. So if we click on preview, now we're going to get search.jefftrue.com forward slash I. I for us is just indicating that it is a saved link within our system. And then here's my URL. So instead of having that really long string that we were looking at before, now you have North Gillum Homes for sale. And it's pulling in just those results for that specific targeted area. We were looking earlier, so this is where we created the 100 to 200, 200 to 300. Now I can go back in and create links for these exact same thing. So the North Gillum area, and then do it by price range of them. Generate that URL. You can even put that in the URL. So do like 100 to 200 Gillum homes for sale or North Gillum homes for sale, 100 to 200. Completely optional. You can do whatever you want with that. And then when you click on these, it's gonna to go to a new results page. And this is also what's considered that custom subheader section. We have the abilities to create different ways of doing this. So we're showing the save link. Um, next thing is going to be, uh, you know, is a save link is an IDX page, what you're going to be adding to the website. Now there's lots of clients that we have that 
they've already got a lot of community pages built out there. They have a lot of SEO or they're already using Facebook ads, targeted ads, Google ads. They're paying for that. Don't change that. You don't want to make a whole lot of changes when you start creating these. Sometimes the stuff that's been sitting out there for five years is going to do better than something that's got you know, maybe great content on the organic search. And if you go create a new one, you're probably going to lose that. So use what you have, leverage IDX broker and add that content to it. Don't try to create, you know, recreate their wheel on that. So we're going to do the, basically the exact same thing that we just did, but we're going to create a widget instead of a saved link. And you can see we're going to have the same thing where we can go in and create new again, select the type of widget. So there's three different types of widgets that you can do for this. There's a slideshow, showcase, and carousel. My personal preference based off of the websites that I've seen, that I've gone over, that I've looked at, that are resulting in the best, is going to be using the showcase or the carousel. Showcase is gonna show you a little bit more properties. This is gonna give you the ability to show the up to like 100 properties maximum. Some MLSs do leave it, so you can't quite do that many. I think it's 50 as the max. I think that's only one MLS now, so pretty much you can do 100 maximum. Keep in mind, the more you do that, the more your client has to scroll. If they're on a mobile device, that's a lot of scrolling. Some people are not going to be very happy. They could have a good bounce or bad bounce rate and they could be out of there. We're going to do it off of a showcase widget though. The other one that is going to be available is a carousel widget where you can choose the number of listings wide and it's going to have the arrows on the left and right side that allow the client to click through, say like four at a time, five at a time, six at a time, depending on what your personal preference is, is how many you want to display on there. Properties to feature. I would suggest going back in with our uh, custom search because we want to get back into that advanced search page since we're trying to keep it very similar in how we're doing things as far as uh, hyper local pages. So we're going to come back in. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to do Eugene and we're going to do North Gillum and we'll remove our price ranges. We're going to go area, Lane Co, and then we're going to select our North Gillum. So we should be pulling in the same number of results. Okay, nothing else is gonna go. I don't have to go view results in a new window just because of the fact that I know that this one here is good. This is what I've already done before. So you'll scroll down to the bottom, pretty much wanna select responsive nowadays. Pretty much every website is responsive. Select yes, we're gonna do North, can't spell today, North Gillum webinar. Sorting here, and so instead of doing it up above, this one here does a little bit different. Now we got the sorting newest listings. We did a select responsive, so it will not let me choose the width. It's always going to put it at 100%. So depending on the container size of where you're embedding this is where it's going to go. Maximum number of columns. So you got between one and 10. You throw five wide. It's going to give you, uh, so we're doing maximum number of listings. I think I screwed up. I think I selected a, I selected a carousel. I'm sorry. We're going to go ahead and roll with a carousel. Uh, so now you can choose the maximum number of columns. We'll do four wide. So this is going to give us four wide with our arrow opacity on the right-hand side, 50%. So it's kind of not very prominent, but it is there. You have the ability to open widgets in a new window. You also have the ability to display all results link. So basically right below the widget that we're going to create, you, you can have it so it says view all results. You can click on it and it'll open up and display a results page based off of that predefined search that we've done. I apologize for not doing a showcase. That was my bad. Two ways of getting this, you can go in and copy the embed script. So you'll copy the script, you'll go into the HTML section of wherever this is gonna be and display into whatever page you want. The other one is if you're using WordPress, that API key is going to pull it into your widget section. You can go into the pages, you can go into the posts and use shortcode, or you can go into the designs, into the widget editor, and then add drag and drop basically into the container wherever you're putting that at. So you got a couple different options. You can preview the widget just to make sure that everything's gonna function just as it's supposed to. So here's our four that we've done. I kind of like the size, the images aren't too big. Arrows on the right-hand side, left-hand side look good. It's not over dominating. And now my client will be able to search through four at a time. You can add multiple widgets onto one page. So you can put like four different widgets for four different areas or property types, or you know, one for condos, one for houses for sale, whatever it might be. You can add all these into there. Question that came in, widgets are JavaScript. Doesn't that slow the search and not SEO friendly? We actually did some testing on that. It's been six, seven, eight months ago where we had a client that was saying that they did not think that widgets were good because it was not giving SEO credit. Uh, we did a test on three different websites on three different computers, three different browsers inside those three different computers. 
And we were actually finding that the SEO was being tagged for those widgets that were embed even on the homepage of the website. So we are strongly saying yes, widgets are SEO friendly. All right, so here's how we have grabbed that. So another option to do is go create um, as many of these widgets as you can, plop these things anywhere. We're gonna be showing a couple of examples of some live clients that have done this. There's many different ways. There's some that are done on landing pages. There's some that are done on self-hosted pages, not just IDX pages. So we're gonna go through real quick, show you some of these. I have a couple of articles that you can go take a look at, and then we're gonna kind of jump into how you can join and get more involved with some of our developer partners, other real estate agents that like to share, you know, what has worked for them. If you get in there, please keep it nice, kind. Um, everybody, everybody has a different practice. Um, things work for different people, different areas. Please work and play together nicely inside there. So we're gonna go take a look at um, a couple of clients that we have. These three do happen to be with developer partners of ours. Kind of my suggestion on this is real estate agents. There's lots of real estate agents that are very tech savvy that do have time within amongst a team where somebody can concentrate on these targeted areas, their website, their save links, their leads. But then there's also agents that don't maybe don't have a tech person that's inside the office. This is where you really wanna try looking for a developer partner let the professionals get in there, do what they can do. If you've got a local person in the office, let them be professional of knowing the industry and also developing out your pages for you, your widgets for you, driving that SEO, driving that content to your website. But also if, you, if you're if you an agent that's not really too tech savvy, that's um, you know not the best at SEO, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, you know, being creative with the content and pages and images, go find a developer partner that's what these guys do. These guys do this every single day and that is all they deal with. A majority of the developer partners that we have, they've been doing real estate as long as I have worked here. There are several names I'm seeing on the screen that have been a dev partner longer than I've been here and it's seven years. So they know the industry, they know what they're doing, but let's go uh, dive in and take a look. So we're gonna do one that's go ranches for sale in Gillespie County. And I'm putting Texas in here just because I'm from Oregon and it doesn't always show up great. So what we've got here is we've got two ads at the very top. Zillow's even got an ad in here. If we go take a look at this, we've got lands of Texas, lands of Texas. And then right down here, this is a client of ours. They are on their custom subdomain of Texas primeranchland.com and Gillespie Ranches for sale. This is the number one page of Google, third one down below the ad spend. Fantastic SEO. We're going to click on that. We're going to come in here. Keep in mind a client that has been with us for a long time. This one happens to be using a dev partner. You can see the URL. So Gillespie Ranches for sale. Keep it very simple. It doesn't have to be over the top. You don't have to use a whole abundance of keywords and text like kiss is kind of like the the biggest thing that comes to my mind is keep it simple don't overdo it don't overthink it sometimes less is more so here's an example of a client that has done that so they have ranches for sale in their drop down menus these are all counties within the area that they are working in so these are their targeted areas ranches for sale you can do searches on these, they will pop up. They are ranking very good. Yes, this is a platinum website. Homes for sale, they've done the same thing. So this one here is broken down with homes for sale. So instead of looking at ranches for sale, now they're looking for homes for sale. So now they've got, I don't know why I chose that one. I can't really pronounce this one, but now we got, uh, they put in, you know, looks like an H1 header tag with Bolverde Texas homes for sale. That's a very good search that probably somebody in that area is probably going to be searching for. So try to keep it simple. Try to uh, do what you can on all that kind of stuff. So we'll move on to the next one. So great one right there. The next one that we have, so this one's going to be not a saved link. This is going to be a page that a client has developed. They've put in their own content. And this is going to be Anthem Coventry Homes for Sale. So now for this one, I have to kind of, I, I kind of have to know where I'm looking at, uh, but it actually looks like somebody might actually have one right down here, homes. Uh, this one. This could be a client of ours. Not 100% sure. But the one that I'm looking for on this one is happens to be uh, Dulcie Crawford. Uh, this one here is in the Las Vegas area. This is a hosted page with several different widgets and different options. Question just came in, and I'm not sure where the question is from prior, but it says, I've been using Showcase, so maybe that's not the way to do it. I can't see that full question for some reason. Showcase and carousel widgets, you're good to use either one. In fact, the one that I'm pulling up, I believe is on a showcase widget. So, and if this one's not, then one of the other ones are. Uh, so basically this is a self-hosted page. 
the client has their information on here. They've put as much as they can, and now they've done predefined searches. So we talked about adding links out to these community pages. So this one here is Search Anthem Coventry Home or Properties. If you look down at the very bottom left corner, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it says search.dolcecrawford.com forward slash I Coventry AT Anthem. So that right there, that is an IDX broker that's using search. So I'm going to open it up in a new tab so that I can show that, but I'm also going to show more that's on here. So you got content about this area and there's different links out here. So we can do advanced search. So search properties, that one's actually going to the same one that I already did. We've got just more information about hot properties. So looks like there, we can open this one and kind of see what this is. So this is actually just put a little link down to the hot properties in Anthem Coventry. So these could be the newest listings on the market. That's kind of a hot market. And it's based off of the price range that the client typically deals with. So this one here is more of a showcase style of widget. So it looks like we've got five of them in here. Um, adding good content is the best thing. You got local school information. It looks like we have... Uh, looks like some images of the area. Here's a platinum feature. This is adding a map search widget of the Coventry area in the community with just the listings around it. There's nothing else surrounding it other than it's an embed of that map search within this area. And then a uh, great feature here. So we have the Anthem community, Coventry Anthem community. Now there's areas that are really close to it. So Anthem Highlands, that was Anthem Coventry. This one is Solera at Anthem. So there's many things within Anthem. So actually I kind of spoke about this a little bit earlier about like North Gillum, East Gillum, South Gillum. These are all gonna be links going over to more areas that's gonna probably display more properties of within this, this specific section. So give your clients the options to simple clicks. I can click on this, go to a property. I can go here, go to results page. This is that results page. Now we're looking at a IDX broker save link coming off of a self-hosted page. Got the results of that specific area. Here's the properties, again, an index page. So you got an index page on their own hosted site, but then you also have a hosted page or a index page on the IDX broker side of things. This one here is done with one of our clients. This one's agent reputation that has done this one. Great looking sites. I love seeing all the developers that have done everything. Next one I'm going to go take a look at does things a couple of different ways and we're going to, it's in the same area. So this is kind of cool because you can see that this client is in the same area, just on a different target. The other one is going to be what's called top Vegas condos for sale. This is by Mike Sullivan and also you Using Realty Candy. So those two have actually worked together. They've been doing it for a lot of years. It's been six years in the making, trying to get everything built up. There's lots of tools that are added to it. So it's a whole different realm of things on this one. But one that I was looking at on this one is basically, you know, the, the website's name is topvegascondos.com. I found, I just basically looked at the website and I found where it said like Meridian Condos for sale. My first search was Meridian Condos for sale. And then I put in Las Vegas just because I'm not in the area, so it may not work as well. What I'm doing now is finding that that specific client, they have their own self-hosted page. Oh, actually, this is kind of cool. If we take a look at that, we've got topvegascondos.com, his own hosted page, and right below it. So he's got two pages ranked on the first page of Google in this search. So here's the search.topvegas. This is IDX broker saved link, and this is his own hosted page. So we're gonna open up both of them just to kind of give it a look. There's a ton of questions popping in. Gretchen is over here typing like a mad person. I'm gonna open it up at the very end and try to answer as much as I can so everybody can see it. Are you replying to everybody can see? Everyone. Okay, so everybody should be able to see some of those questions and replies coming out. So I hope that's the case. So this one here, we're looking at the top Vegas condos. This is the self-hosted page. He has his own content. He's got a description about it. And now he's linking. This is what I was talking about earlier, creating multiples based off of property types. So now we have search condos for sale, and then we have search condos for rent. Two entirely separate different things coming from the same location based off of that building. Obviously, Vegas, maybe like New York, Miami, San Diego, you could be running into that same type of thing. Obviously, I haven't visited too many places in the States, but I would imagine there's lots that are like that. So this is going to be the saved link, still the same thing. We, it looks like we got a uh, H2, H3 tag up here. Very good. Just give that client exactly what it is. And we're going right to the results pages. On the actual host of pages, we're going to go take a look at the condos for sale and condos for rent should be about the same thing. So again, we're just letting the client know that you've clicked on the condos for sale. And this one here, I bet you is going to say for rent. And it does. If you look at those three different pages, those are three different things. These three different pages are very consistent. Stay consistent. Don't go all over the board, changing things. Consistency is going to go a long ways. 
not one for your clients, but two also with Google. Another thing to keep a look at, obviously the more pages you have, the more save links you have, the more widgets you have, these are very good things with indexing. So if you look over here, these are probably all linking to self-hosted pages, but also linking to save links. So if we go click on one, let's go to the Manhattan and let's just see, again, the Manhattan for sale, Manhattan for rent, click to view. I look at the URL at the bottom left, search.topvegas, forward slash I Manhattan Las Vegas condos for rent. I love this. Hopefully everybody's keeping up going good. Moving over to the next section here. So that's kind of a good little section where we've been at. Some things that you can kind of take a look at is do, do some searches out there. Uh, we have a lot of developer partners that have wrought, written a lot of articles that show best practices, maybe that they do with, maybe that they educate on. I try to read some of these as I go. I did some more searches and trying to find it ones that pop through off the top of my head. Agent Image has one that says, uh, how to build an effective real estate community page. A lot of what I just explained when I briefly went over that earlier, they were showing almost exactly what I am showing here on all three of these different websites. They all are kind of in there. So it's a best practice based off of one, a developer partner of ours. Another one is Realty Candy. He wrote up an, a landing page, but he has also created some add-ons where he has created a save link generator. So it also helps where he's kind of taken some additional tools using our tools, building his own tool and making, uh, generating new links for you. So instead of spending maybe hundreds of hours on this or multiple weekends doing this, he's also got ways that he's kind of got in here. He's worked with our developers. You know, we've got agent reputation that works with our developers, talks with our team, like what's coming new, what's in the works, what can I work on? These guys reach out to us constantly. And if there's more developer partners on there, please reach out to us. Like we want to work with everybody that we can on this type of stuff. We love showcasing what we see. And if you've got more things that I need to know about, reach out to me directly because I love working on this kind of stuff. We talked about, man, we're 11.45. This is going by way too fast. I'm going to pop up a screen here in just a moment. I'm going to log in on the side. So we have a group. Um, it's on Facebook. So not everybody's on Facebook. Totally understandable. Not everybody is. Social media sometimes just crushes us for our time. Uh, we have a group called IDX Broker Masterminds. This group was created a long before I have ever been here. It originally is a place that allows agents, brokers, developer partners to come in and ask questions. Some people obviously express their frustrations. I hope it doesn't make it to social media, but sometimes it does. We try to help out as best as we can. Reach out to us if you've got any questions, problems, issues. We're more than happy to help you out. This is also a really good community where people kind of post in questions. Holy cow, this is blowing up. I'm, I'm glad to see this. My, I'm getting blown up on the side here with all these people that are requesting to join. I love it. I'm going to get you on there soon, so give me some time. This is a IDX Broker Masterminds group. Join this group. Please be kind. Be courteous. I try to monitor this, but just as every one of you... We try to also unplug a little bit once we leave the office. Unfortunately, I'm not very good at doing that and I'll probably see you in the evenings on this. Give kind of what, some, what works for you. Share your experiences. Yes, real estate can get kind of competitive, but you know what? Helping other people can also help yourself as well because you can give some good advice, but there's also other people putting advice out there that's really helpful for them. Inside certain areas, things that happen in Eugene, Oregon, as opposed to stuff that happens in Las Vegas, as opposed to stuff that happens in Salt Lake City, Utah, Atlanta, Florida, Miami, Texas, you know, everything is very different. Like when I talk to a client that's in Eugene and I talk to a client that's in Hollywood or one that's in Miami, here in Eugene, nobody wants to force a registration. I talk to somebody in Hollywood, if they're kind of working in the higher end, they don't want anybody to even look at one specific search page until they capture that lead. So. Everything is very different. Please don't harp on anybody for doing it one way. Please give suggestions at what works for your kind of your best practice. But take a look around here, scroll through this thing, read some of what people are doing. People are gonna ask questions. Does anyone know of a good IDX broker powered website ranking well? This one here got great comments. There are so many developer partners that get in here and are more than willing to help you out. There's lots of developer partners that are willing to just do kind of a one-off project where you're not going to go on and join their developer partner program, but they might have a fee structure where they can go on and be like, you know what, this is going to take me three hours. Here's my hourly rate. I will do this for you, help you implement it. There's other developer partners that are going to be like, yeah, I'm like, I'll do this. If you come, you know, you can join under my tag. I will then continue to support it for you. 
so that, that and that kind of brings up just a quick little thing. When you have a developer partner, that means that they are going to be your point of contact if you've got issues, problems, questions about the support of your account. So that's kind of like what we're teaming up with them. So we push and encourage our dev partners. They push and encourage our solution as well. They give our dev team much feedback on what they deal with because these guys are in here day in and day out working with our system. They sometimes see things as an issue before we see it just because we're not working on it. We're only getting there and receiving the issues or problems so that we can address it. So join join the group, join the conversation. We are constantly, constantly working on making our solution a better fit for everybody. Granted, everybody has different wants, needs, for different areas. It does take time to develop some new stuff. So it's one of those things that if we get a lot of the same types of requests, we're going to put them in. The more requests that we get for some things, they're obviously going to move up in the higher to where we can get in there and test it. 2020, our goals coming from our CEO, this is his year that he wants to really put out some new stuff. We've got some great stuff coming down the pipeline. I wish I could explain some of them to you, but I got to make you wait. But oftentimes some things that get posted new, we're going to post it on here. And we also look out for people that we can send to do some testing for us, give us some feedback before it is pushed out and launched fully live. So I hope this has been a great webinar for you guys. This is a, a passion of mine for this topic. I love explaining it, love going over it. If you've got any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Our support team is always here. We are here in-house. They're at help at idxbroker.com. They're also on our main website. We don't hide any phone numbers. Everything is plain as sight. 1-800-421-9668. Our sales team is at info at idxbroker.com. And I'm always happy to answer any questions. My email address is my last name, true at idxbroker.com. Is there any questions that I got to go over or did you got it? answered all right any more questions we're happy to answer and if you guys got more questions let's just give it i mean we're, we're almost into the one hour phase i'll give you eight more minutes and then i'm ready for some lunch so um, i'll give it a couple minutes if you got a couple questions i'd be happy to answer them for you so that the whole group can go if not keep in mind this was recorded and it will be reposted to our youtube channel later all right it looks like uh not too many more questions so i'm happy with this if you guys are all happy with this we also appreciate any feedback Reviews are always hard to come by. Sometimes people don't like to give reviews when it's a good thing, but it kind of helps with creating new content. It helps with new clients joining us. If you ever have time and you want to drop us a call or drop us a comment, we love our Facebook feedback comments, and we also love it on Google as well. So I appreciate this and look forward to my next webinar next quarter. Have a great day, guys.